what's an overlay? Yeah, good question. Um, so there are, um, let's see if I go back to my uh, nice lasagna here. Um, so when I want to have communication between the nodes here, you know, the, the simplest thing, the simplest thing we could do, uh, you know, when, when you have uh, this little, it, it's, it's kind of popular to have a little Raspberry Pi cluster at home. I don't because, um, I mean, it's, it's a fun idea, but um, I prefer to do other funny things with Raspberry Pis. <laughs> but so for instance, imagine that each node is a Raspberry Pi. We could connect all of them with a switch, just like an Ethernet switch. And in that case, we could use bridging. So you put all the nodes, all the pods together on the same network and they can communicate directly. And in that case, you do not need an overlay. Now, let's say that the nodes are actually cloud VMs. Um, and the problem is that when you want to go from a node to another, you kind of go on the, let's say the cloud network fabric and I mean, you know, the, the network of Amazon or Google or uh, whomever. And on that network, you generally, you cannot use any IP address you want. You, you can only use the IP addresses that I've been given to you. And so if you use bridging in that case, it doesn't work. So tunneling or overlay is one way to work around this. The idea is that the pods are going to have an address, like for instance, 1042.2.5, like in my example here. And when the packets um, for, let's say that pod, that, let's say that pod wants to talk to that other one here, when the packets go out here, they are going to be encapsulated in a node to node packet. So, you know, from the outside, it looks like the two nodes are communicating together, but really it's one pod uh, communicating to the next. You know, you take the packet from the pod, encapsulate it, send it to the other node. The other node receives the packet, decapsulates and delivers to the pod. That's what an overlay is. Um, does it make sense to do that, like the thing I just did here in a cloud environment where nodes can be deleted and recreated by the provider? Um, yeah, it, it can make sense. Um, like typically on, on Amazon, like these limits can be problematic. It really depends on your workloads. You know, you have to do the little division, like, okay, how much RAM, et cetera. And for some folks, these limits are very real. Uh, so changing the, the network is one way to work around it. Uh, and because of because of Cube Router, uh, and I mean, I use Cube Router here, but it could be something else like Calico, Weave, etc. Because it's in a daemon set, as soon as the node joins the cluster, it's going to receive a Cube Router pod. And because um, that VPC networking was set up by AWS node, because I deleted a WS node, the new nodes joining the cluster won't have that VPC setup. So that's, uh, um, it's not completely obvious at first, but it's one of the really nice things um, about uh, daemon sets um, is that when a, when a cluster, uh, when a node joined the cluster, like a lot of uh, automated setup can happen.